So we are going to go ahead and get started. I want to welcome you all. My name is Elizabeth Aloni. I'm with Schneps Media. Schneps Media is the largest local media company in the New York metro area. We publish over 80 newspapers, magazines, webinars, websites, podcasts, and events throughout Queens, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Manhattan, Westchester, Long Island, the East End, Philadelphia, and now also in Florida. So we are thrilled to have you here today for a very important webinar, Online Learning with an LD, Challenges, Triumphs, and Lessons Learned. You know, online learning can present obstacles and challenges for any student, and particularly those with a learning difference. Our panel is going to explore how the explosion of online learning in the past two years has exposed the strengths and weaknesses of this format for students with LD. Let's meet our panelists today. First, I'd like to welcome Dr. Gail Gibson Sheffield. She joined Landmark College in 2016 as Vice President for Academic Affairs. She previously served as Associate Provost and Dean of Curriculum and Student Learning at Paul Smith College, where she held various roles since 1998. Dr. Gibson Sheffield earned a BS in Communication Arts and Sciences from Linden State University, an MS in Instructional Design from Syracuse University, and a PhD in Education from Capella University. Welcome, Dr. Sheffield. Hello. Next. <laughs> Thank you. Next, it's my pleasure to introduce Tabitha Mancini. She's the Director of Outreach for Online Programs at Landmark College. Tabitha directs the outreach efforts for the Landmark College Online Dual Enrollment Program, where she works with high schools, transition programs, and educational professionals to pragmatically infuse the college's online dual enrollment courses into their curriculum. ODA offers college level online learning for students with LD, ADHD, and autism. Tabitha serves Director of Disability Services at the university level and is a current adjunct faculty member for the University of Connecticut, where she teaches graduate level courses focused on disability services, accommodation legal policy, and assistive technology. She earns her Bachelor of Arts in Sociology with highest honors from the University of California, Berkeley, and a Master of Arts in Educational Psychology from the University of Connecticut. Welcome, Tabitha. Next, I'd like to introduce Dean Bragnay. He is the founder and executive dyslexic of, of Noticeability Inc. He is, it's a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping students with dyslexia identify their unique strengths and build self-esteem. Shaped by the challenges associated with his dyslexia and after struggling through the traditional secondary education system, Dean became a diligent and successful college student who developed a true love of learning at Bates College. Upon graduation, Dean embraced his entrepreneurial instincts and acquired a small seasonal restaurant in Martha's Vineyard Island that he transformed into a successful full-scale enterprise. It was through this endeavor that he was able to contextualize his years of laborious academic learning and discover the true gifts of his own dyslexic mind. As a social entrepreneur, Dean has founded his own nonprofit organizations and served as board member and advisor to a number of others. Noticeability is the culmination of Dean's passion for education and his conviction that the advantages of dyslexia far outweigh its associated challenges. Welcome, Dean. Next, I'm pleased to present Amory Donahue, education entrepreneur and founder of Language and Education. Amory is an education entrepreneur focused on childhood development and effective teaching methods for all types of learners. She's the founder of Language and Education, a Spanish immersion preschool, which has grown to include six campuses in the Bay Area. In addition to her preschools, Amory created and launched a small middle school program for students with learning and attention issues with a particular focus on social and emotional learning. Amory serves on the National Board of Eye to Eye, a nonprofit organization that mentors and advocates for people with learning differences. She also serves on the board of Winston Preparatory Schools, which serves students ages 8 to 21 with learning differences. Welcome, Amory. And last but certainly not least, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Will Donahue, a wonderful sophomore at Landmark College. Will is a student from San Francisco who took Landmark's college online dual enrollment courses before enrolling at LC in fall 2020. Welcome, Will. 
So thank you all for joining us and I'm thrilled to get started. To begin, I wanna get started with Gail. Can you tell us a little bit about the unique learning needs of students with learning differences? Sure, um, you know, part of what we see is that the students that come to Landmark College uh, don't fit easily into any one box. Um, they each approach their learning experience, not only through the, the challenges that they may have as individuals, but also carrying with them uh, a lifetime of challenging educational environments. Uh, most schools, most education is designed uh, for the masses and not for the individual. And so what we try to emphasize at Landmark is, is the individual, is really honing in on what the goals are for the individual student and help them play to their strengths develop a better metacognition um, and self-reflection over where their challenges are, and then be able to prescribe and work with those students to be able to address those uh, individual challenges and turn them into strengths or turn them into strategies that will help them to be successful while still honoring and celebrating who they are as individuals. And I think that's really the big difference that so much of school is not designed for the individual student to really shine. It's mostly designed for one size fits all, and that includes online delivery. One size fits all, and so lots of students fall through the cracks. That's such a great point. It's really critical to take a look at the unique challenges and the unique strengths of each individual student and be able to support them as they're needed so that they can shine and, and reach their, their potential. So thank you for that. That's really important. You know, COVID's disrupted learning for all students and certainly has required them to move to online learning. I think we've all become Zoom experts to some degree. So Tabitha, you know, in dealing with um, people with learning differences, you know, who has really benefited from this online experience and, and who still struggles? Sure, thank you. Um, welcome everybody. Um, students who, many students uh, with LDs and ADHD have actually benefited in many ways um, because it offers a lot, the online modality offers a lot of flexibility for students who need flexibility for a variety of reasons. Um, it's an excellent um, uh, learning modality. Um, and such as in the case of asynchronous class environments where students can go back um, and reread and rewatch uh, media and lectures, take, to, take as much time as they need to process information, take time to, um, to uh, take and slow down information, revisit information, time to take notes. That's been a really a wonderful uh, opportunity for, for many students. Um, in addition to the built-in technologies um, that are available. So uh, students have been now exposed to multiple types of technology where they've, it's been kind of this playground. Sometimes it's, um, there's lots of learning curves with that as well, but they've been exposed um, to different types and have um, had the opportunity to see what works for them and what doesn't, such as like text-to-speech programs where the computer will actually breed text to you. Um, and learning management systems, um, learning how to, to use learning management systems where online um, courses are housed. There's different types of different programs, different brands, um, but it's uh, an opportunity to have everything organized. So um, one place to, have, to hold everything such as instructor feedback, um, electronic notebooks, calendars, and class materials. So in that way, these types of tools have been very, very beneficial um, for students. Students who struggle, um, we recognize how important that the social emotional connection um, was and saw this even um, highlighted even more when COVID hit um, and it became even more important. And we understand the social emotional aspect of learning, and especially the journey that our, many of our students have been on um, and many have for good reasons, a heightened sensitivity to the unknown, especially in the learning environment. Um, so students can tend to get stressed even before starts, uh, classes start just with anticipation of what they, what they don't know and perhaps becoming very overwhelmed. Um, and so that we, we realized that this was something that um, was really key to, to um, address. Um, and now, so, go ahead. Yeah. Now, as I say, online learning, although it's become the norm to some degree because of COVID, it's not brand new to Landmark. It's not. Um, and we've actually been doing our dual enrollment um, program since 2016. 
um, and has really ramped up over the last about four years or so. So our um, courses are very intentional. So where you were, had courses that, you know, we had to do emergency remote learning, um, which is a very different type of online experience than courses that are built specifically to be um, online. Mm. Now, how can online teaching be modified to produce successful strategies for students with LD and attention strat challenges? Yeah, so uh, when building programs, um, people should really think about um, how they are being designed um, as far as what is it like a day in a life of a student for you know a, an online student? What is that like from start to finish? Um, and then even after and then preparing before, what, what is that like in creating um, in an online environment, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, taking that into account. So flexibility, personalization, and connection to faculty and instructors are key. Um, also using a universally designed approach for learning and course design and teaching are critical factors. Um, and that's really designing and teaching in such a way that allows as many people to access information as possible. Um, and I'm happy to, to give people more information and talk about universal design um, and resources for that approach as well at any time um, or after. Um, and courses should also um, have great emphasis of applied learning. And so students should have I mean, our students especially benefit most from a lot of opportunity to deeply reflect on what they're learning about, how it applies to them. So assignments and assessments should be structured in such a way that it facilitates this. Wonderful. So you had a little bit of a road, uh, um, a road to what was going to be more effective for people with learning differences. What you know, what what started the online learning? for Landmark, um, because really you're ahead of the curve, um, so to speak. I think most schools really were in that emergency mode uh, when COVID hit. So what, what was the impetus for the online learning in the beginning? Yeah, so it actually happened a very organic process, um, which is also exciting to say because we had a very long on-ramp um, to doing this. And we work um, with Winston Prep, um, very closely, which they have a cluster of schools uh, across the United States. Um, and uh, there's schools specifically designed for students, uh, high school students with learning disabilities, learning differences. And so they wanted, we were already doing some course design online and they really wanted to be able to offer our courses. Um, so we partnered with them and we've been growing ever since. Um, so this, uh, this academic year, um, we will, be serving about 400 students. Wow, that's phenomenal. Thank you for that. Sure. So I want to turn to Dean. You know, you're an expert in dyslexia, um, and you know, you, you. I love reading your bio and talking about how really it becomes something that's a that's a, a value, not something to be um, hidden or ashamed of, or think of it as a disability, but actually, it's a unique ability. So can you share with us how online learning has affected those with dyslexia? Uh, certainly, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll place a caveat on, on being a dyslexic expert insofar as I am an expert in being dyslexic, and I'm married to a dyslexic, and I'm the father of a dyslexic and the son of a dyslexic. So while I don't have a PhD behind my name, I do have um, over a century of lived experience, if you put it all together. Um, you, know, you know, Tabitha made a very important distinction, which is the, the emergency uh, remote learning versus the prepared remote learning. And I think there's, uh, unfortunately, I think the emergency remote learning is what everybody is focusing on and how it's deficient um, because it was emergency. And as Tabitha mentioned, it takes a tremendous amount of foresight and thought to do it properly. So I, I applaud Landmark um, and, and organizations like mine that were already trending in that direction and were prepared to meet students as this unique and unfortunate need arose. Um, 
But for us, from a from we're, we're an organization that focuses on social emotional development of children with dyslexia, or mid middle school students with dyslexia, and you know one of the interesting things that we found was that uh, there is a common misconception among individuals with dyslexia specifically that somehow they are alone on their journey. We know statistically that we are not and that approximately 15 to 20 percent of the people will pass on the street have dyslexia, but because there's no visual identification, we believe falsely that we're going at this alone. And what we experienced by transitioning from partially learning management system, remote learning into 100 percent remote learning was that we were able to create an opportunity for students with dyslexia to come together in a virtual platform from countries around the world and recognize very quickly that they had what they perceived in the beginning as a shared challenge and then ultimately um, left our programs with with what they what they agreed was a shared strength and so there there's there's two things that i think were at play besides uh, well one thing besides the intervention that we offer the second was the fact that these were students that were given a temporary reprieve from the negative feedback loop that that many of us experience in a traditional classroom it's it's sometimes explicit teacher saying you know hey you know dean if you tried harder you'd do better or you know uh you know why aren't you getting this it's so easy for everybody else or it's hazing and, and bullying from our peer group but you know as as the overall detrimental impact of covid on on student progress notwithstanding I think that the temporary uh, moment to be pulled out of that negative feedback loop was really quite interesting for students with 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 dyslexia in our case or LD in general, and and we saw it as an opportunity to sort of uh, I'll use the word inoculate because it's so commonplace now, but to inoculate them against some of that negativity that was that was forming in their personal narrative. That's incredibly powerful to think that you know being able to get outside of that constant barrage of negativity is able to give them a clearer view of themselves and allow them to be more successful students. That's really a, a very, I'm sure, unexpected outcome that is quite, you know, welcome. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, that can lead to skills that can help them to be more effective in, in dealing with this when returning to in person. I think, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll quiet down in a second, but I think that, you know, as we as individuals cultivate a more holistic, a well-balanced perspective of who we are and what our values and what our challenges are, that equips us with the ability to walk into otherwise inhospitable environments like a traditional education classroom and buoy our self-esteem in order to get through it with the academic resilience that we require. Um, again, and, and, and for me personally, it was a, it was a much better way to, 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 um, to keep my sanity uh, during, during those early days of COVID. So, so it was a, actually, it was a huge benefit to the organization and to me personally and the students we worked with, I think. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. There's always a silver lining, right? Um, I want to ask you another question too, just, you know, for you to, to, to speak to, you know, as, as Gail had shared, you know, the value of a, an, an education that's geared for each individual student and what value you've seen um, in being able to do that with the students that you work with. Yeah, um, uh, you know, uh... Thank you for that question. Our, you know, our, our, our education, our curriculum uh, or curricula, we've got three courses uh, specifically tailored to the advantages, the cognitive benefits associated with dyslexia, contextualized within the professions where we as, 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 as a population are disproportionately successful. Um, so so we're, we're, we're hyper focused on, on a strength based approach. One of my um, one of my issues with traditional education, and I'm stealing wise words from other people I've heard speak, is that you know our traditional education prepares students for a closed book world. You know, can you memorize who won the War of 1812 and who was the commander and all that? When in actuality, the workplace demands 
an open book approach. How quickly can you find information and put it into a relevant context to benefit the job or the team? And so, you know, ironically for students with LD, and I I'm really can only speak to dyslexia specifically, you know, so much of the attributes that we have that is a correlated to our learning profile actually suit us for that interpersonal connection, that collaboration team-based work environment. And our creativity allows us to navigate that open book world pretty effectively. We're pretty good at doing that. I would say almost gifted at doing that. And so it's, I, again, I'm, I'm getting on a soapbox and I don't mean to, it, it's premature, I know, but the idea is that I think that the 21st century is actually perfectly geared for the dyslexic advantages. So while I would love to say, oh, you know, we're, we created personalized learning for this unique learning profile, we actually are just kind of creating something that I think is catering to the future workforce environment. And that's just serendipitous. I had nothing to do with that, I guarantee. Well, I, you know, it's funny because when you say saying that, it reminds me of what Tabitha said in terms of, you know, what was required of the students to navigate an online experience. And a lot of what you're talking about, Tabitha, is really the things that are so critical for students to be effective at in order to be successful in the work environment. And, you know, and, uh, you know, I've, I've met uh, the wonderful people at Landmark previously. And I think, you know, one of the things that is so exciting to me and what Dean is speaking of as well is, you know, the power of, of celebrating differences and creating curriculum around that supports the differences. I mean, what a different world this would be if that was the norm, as opposed to it being the special um, situation. But I think that's what's so exciting about Landmark, whether that be in person or online, is this ability for every single student to reach into their unique abilities and allow them to shine with them. Um, you know, as you said, the dyslexic uh, person is, is uniquely prepared for this world. And I, and I would say that I think that's probably true with a lot of learning differences. It's just about finding that right path. And, and teaching that in through that way. Tabitha, did you want to say something? Yeah, I do. Uh, just um, kind of par parlaying on that is I think that one of the opportunities that online learning environments have created is the opportunity to explore. And so, you know, when we're learning about ourselves, you know, the exploration process of, is, is, is huge. Um, and deciding, you know, we kind of have, it's, there's a playground out there now of online courses and um, access um, to institutions such as Landmark that didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. um, and so now people from all over the world can access us and, you know, also Dean's programs and other programs that are, that are out there that they just weren't able to before. And I think that that's very, very exciting. Yes, it is. Can I, can I piggyback on what Tabitha just said? Because I think it's particularly exciting. You know, Landmark right now is one of the, as you said, ahead of the curve in this very innovative approach to education. And they've done it historically in person and now have done it so beautifully online. The reality is that online learning is scalable, mm -hmm. right? You no longer have to be, live in New England to access Landmark College. And that is how we actually move the needle and open up opportunity for the entire population. I mean, our boy Will, right? He was in San Francisco when he started at Landmark, right? But he may as well have been in India. And that's why, I mean, I think all of us in the nonprofit business want to put ourselves out of business because our missions have been accomplished. But, you know, right now, Landmark is the exception. I hope that everyone will realize that this should be the norm. Absolutely. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. And I love that you mentioned Will because um, we, I'd like to turn to Amory uh, Donahue and Will. Actually, Amory is not only um, an expert in her field, but she's also the mother of Will. So um, I would love for them to share, you know, how an environment online or in person that is uniquely designed for those with learning differences, you know, have impacted Amory, you know, your experience of Will's education and, and then Will sharing with me, you know, your experience of your journey. Amory, would you like to get started? I think I'm gonna turn it over <coughs> to Will and let oh. Will start first. Is that okay, oh. Will? 
Well, if you would, I would love for you to share with me a little bit about how the landmark experience has, you know, impacted your education and your experience. I'll give a kind of a, um, I think I'll give a short introduction to myself. Um, sure. Again, uh, thank you so much for introducing us earlier. Um, so um, again, my name is Will Donahue. I'm a uh, currently a second year student um, uh, at Landmark um, and I currently pursuing my Associates of Arts and Liberal Studies, um, which I'll complete this spring and also plan, plan on pursuing my bachelor's degree here as well at Landmark College. Um, to get to this point, um, uh, my online experience with Landmark um, through online learning, you know, has had a very significant impact um, on me. And I forgot, um, do you mind repeating the question you ask? Sorry about that. Uh, you want me to repeat my question? Please. So, so what I wanted to know was about how your education experience has been with Landmark, you know, both from, from online, and then you can share a little bit about how that turned into in-person. You know, both, you know, both, both in-person and online programs here at Landmark College are really well designed to support students with learning differences in ADHD. And throughout all my time, both online and in-person, they, their methods have had a very positive life-changing experience on me. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, um, the online dual enrollment program I, I, that I took, classes that I took in high school, helped me feel confident that I could succeed academically in college. And I, when I arrived as a residential student, or when I began as a full-time residential student, I already had college-level academic experience and college-level skills. Um, uh, I think in many ways that it helped is that I felt connected with both professors and classmates. Mm. Professors um, provided clear directions, answered questions clearly, clear directions, answered questions, and were supportive of student growth in the online setting. And then you also have felt like you are part of a learning community, even though you're e online through these courses as well. Um, and this provided me with an opportunity to learn much more uh, through the online dual enrollment um, and grow much more than taking, let's say, more, more classes with my high school. Um, so were you, in, were you in high school when you got started with the online learning or was it after high school? So I learned about Landmark um, uh, in the fall of my junior year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, fall of 2018, and then the spring of 2019 is when I took my first online dual enrollment course. Um, and then I took my in the online dual enrollment course in the fall and spring of my senior year, and in the summer of 2020 as well. And then I started as a full time student. Wonderful. And now are you there in person? I am in person. Correct. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, so through the, you know, another thing that's really important that is that a major impact on my education journey and a lot of people's is that, you know, you can earn college credit before you, before you begin as a full-time student for your, for your, um, through the online dual enrollment courses. Um, so for me, in my case, I started as a I took four courses for 12 credits before mm -hmm. I had even started as a full-time student. Wow. And that, so, and that's a normally traditionally four classes is what students take in a full, is a full course load in a semester. Yeah. So I had a semester's worth of credits before I'd even start, when I started as a full-time student. Um, and that was, you know, certainly really beneficial with speeding up my uh, you know, speeding up a little bit of my college graduation, as well as learning a lot from these courses. Um, and then also, another little thing is that I was also a, um, for my first year due to the pandemic, which was right, that these courses provide me with the opportunity to be an online student. Um, 
as well for my first first whole year um, as a landmark student. Um, so this is actually currently now, this is my first, I'm currently now in my second semester as a residential student um, as well. Um, so, you know, it's been a very positive experience. Um, I had a very positive experience online and also, uh, well, uh, in the past couple of months here as a residential student. Um, so I'm glad to share about my kind of learning from them. That's wonderful. Thank you. I'd like to add something. So if when I think about Will's journey, and it goes back to the you know first school that he was in, Something that Dean said is that like, like the, the school environment can be really, really tough mm -hmm. on neurodiverse students. And a lot of parents out there and teachers out there, you know, are, are not aware. And so there's impact on these children. And I work with the youngest children. I have preschools and we're working with kids at the earliest age. And like Dean says, one out of five of us have learning differences. And even in preschool, we can see that. And part of our journey as uh, preschool educators is helping the parents understand that. Like that's the gift that we're hoping to give to these children that the parents understand. So then the parents can take the reins and support that, that child along that journey. Because it was, I mean, Will was such a good sport and he went to a lot of different schools that were um, not designed to support um, a neurodiverse learner. And he kept his self-esteem up. Um, and when we found out about the dual online courses, it wasn't offered at his high school, but an amazing educator helped make that happen. And Will took the um, learning uh, perspectives in learning, which is a class that I think every high school should offer for every student, because mm. we're all neurodiverse you know we all have right and it and and that course it was just so clear that the way it was designed that will didn't have to go through this cognitive overload just to get to the assignment and um and it gave him that courage there was like yes i'm doing a college class you know college might be actually in my future and I think a lot of our neurodiverse students aren't getting that messaging through their, what, 12 years of, you know, before they head off to college. So I'm incredibly um, thankful for the dual online enrollment classes. I think they set Will on this incredible path. And for a mom that was always advocating for him, you know, creating our own middle school option because a good option didn't exist. The day that I dropped Will off on campus at Landmark and I flew, you know, flew home, I just felt like I had run like a hundred marathons. I was so exhausted, but I was like, he's in a place where they und everybody understands him. And like, I can sit back and let him chart his way now. Um, and, and, you know, that was a result of, of starting with the online journey because somebody else had mentioned anxiety. There's so much anxiety in a lot of neurodiverse students. And so, Will in his journey, so he had the online courses during high school, he took a college class during the summer, and then because of that pandemic, he wasn't ready to go off to Vermont, even though Landmark was open and running, he, he was not going to go to his first year, he was clear on that, and they shifted and they provided this online experience, I think there were 30 students in that first year. 
And so Will was able to understand a full college load. He was able to get to know his professors. He was able to get to know other kids on campus. And so then when he was actually on campus, he had that strong foundation. And then what he had to get acclimated was, you know, living in a dorm, living away from home. So it was an amazing journey. It really sounds incredible. And I think, you know, you bring up a really good point about running of the marathon and feeling exhausted at a certain point and how wonderful it is for your child to be able to find a place that can kind of take the baton and um, help them. I mean, Will, you're so impressive, you know, hearing you speak and your, um, your confidence and your self-assuredness is really an incredible thing to see for any anyone any any child quote unquote young adult um, no matter what it is really um, extraordinary. Thank you to both of you for sharing that. I think that it was really valuable. Will, did you want to say something quickly? It looks like you want to say something. You know, another another small thing that another important uh, you know opportunity of my online learning experience as well um, was. Uh, that I also, um, mainly, it was really only my first year as an online full-time student, um, was also meeting my uh, academic advisor, uh, which uh, every full-time student at Landmark uh, also has as well. Mm. So that was, that was very beneficial to you as well. Wonderful. So I want to I want to jump over here. Thank you so much, Will and, and Amory. Thank you so much. Um, to, back to Tabitha and Gail. And ask, you know, what should a parent, you know, look, you know, so many of us are, are in Amory's situation, you know, what should a parent look for of a student with learning differences? What should they be looking for in a school? I'm going to jump in first and let Tabitha come in. I, I wanted to pull together some of the threads of what you heard about the reason why Landmark College was able to develop our dual enrollment courses is because it is grounded in our philosophy of, of, of teaching. And so what that comes down to is we intentionally have small class sizes so that the students can be seen and can make strong connections with their faculty and with each other. And when we talk about our programs and our education, it isn't just the relationship between the faculty member and the student. As Will had mentioned, it's also the faculty, the student, and the whole academic support team, which is largely facilitated by the academic advisor. And when we say advisors at Landmark, we're not talking about the person who helps you pick your courses next semester. We're talking about someone who really helps you to tease out your own understanding of who you are, largely grounded on that perspectives and learning course that Amy mentioned before, but really, getting a handle on, on who you are as a learner, where your challenges are, and what resources you can access. And that moves into the rest of it. We have ac the academic support resources, coaching resources. That's what you need to look for in, in an educational system, a place that's going to be resource rich for the student to be able to access what they need when they need it, not just on the academic side, but also on the, uh, the living side. Because a lot of what our students are challenged with isn't just their learning difference, it is the anxiety, it is the, the newness of, of connecting with other, with other students. Some of our students, we have a number of students who are, who are autistic, um, who need to work on some of their social pragmatic issues. We have all of that connected into one educational program, and that's what a student should be looking for in a college experience, is that they'll have the supports they need when they need it. Um, and in terms of the actual instruction, really an emphasis on, on time, on clarity, on organization, so that you're not seeing courses that are making access to the information more challenging than the information itself. And that's, that's a priority for us. Tabitha? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So that um, is perfect segue into exactly what I was going to say. So there's um, much of what I was going to say. I, I will go back to one point is that, you know, how, how is the institution, um, wherever you're looking at, are, do they see learning from a student lens? Are they student centered? Are they understand that day in the life of a student and are they prepared? Um, are the courses, uh, the design and the instruction prepared to teach from that, from that lens? Um, 
And it's important to think about how engaging that the content and the delivery method is. So, you know, I'm speaking from, from online, which is a different learning um, environment than, than in person. So um, is, is the content and the way that's delivered engaging um, and how, so being able to identify um, how that is. Um, and are the courses laid out consistently? So once a student becomes familiar with the layout, it really does help to ease stress. And we often find that once students like will, they'll go through one class um, and then they really find their, their, their wings and they take more classes in Excel very quickly. Um, so the consistency of the course layout and the approach is really important. Um, and then, you know, the institution's credentials and any quality indicators that are out there, such as what you know, other students are saying, their success rate, inter, um, any industry quality cert, uh, certifications, um, types of uh, experiences of instructors. I think it is absolutely key to have people um, that not only from an academic um, side of things understand dyslexia, but the lived experience, like Dean, I think it's, um, it adds um, depth and richness and nuance um, and relatability. So having those perspective amongst your staff and faculty are really um, um, uh, key. And then also I would ask to look for, um, you know, how like it's syllabi and take a look to see how courses are structured, how they're, um, how they are um, laid out what type of engagement opportunities are. You can really tell a lot um, by a syllabus. So I'd ask to take a look at them. Terrific, thank you for that. And yeah, please. Sorry, sorry, Elizabeth, I was just gonna, I was gonna just to piggyback. I mean, you've just heard from two, you know, specialists in the field of, you know, collegiate accommodations and all of that. I mean, I'm, I'm the father of a, of a 14 year old. So I'm kind of staring down that pipeline. Um, and one of the reasons why I, I, I include uh, Bates College where I went to, went to school in, in my description is, you know, this is, I, I, I arrived on uh, Bates campus in 1991. And soon after getting there, um, I was approached by, by members of, of the faculty saying, I understand you took your time on time to SATs you're uh, we you you are entitled to these accommodations not only that we're going to provide you with a note taker a, uh, a, 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 a you know a fellow peer student that we as a college will pay for they came to me with all of these accommodations and one of the things that I think is really tough for parents um, of, of a student with LD is is you know during that application process or that investigation into what college is right you might want to say well if I talk about my child or if my child talks about his LD is that going to put him at a, a, a in, in, in a compromised position in the application process and the response is if you're not talking about it and the college isn't responsive to it your child is not going to be happy and successful there anyway so let's just be forthright and be honest about what we need and the enlightened institutions like Bates like Landmark will be very forthright about what they're prepared to do to have your child succeed and that's what you want, right? So anyway, sorry, just had to interject. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So, you know, one other question, you know, that really, I think, you know, Will certainly gave a good example of, but maybe each of you could share briefly, you know, how has Landmark seen this type of education make a difference in the lives of those with learning differences? Um, Will was so wonderful to share his, but um, perhaps each of you could give us a little Maybe one of your favorite stories or, or um, some information on that. Tabitha, you want to get started, or Gail? I'm happy to. <laughs> <laughs> um, we actually avoid so, so many stories. I mean, I think um, Will's story um, and been working with Will for how, how long do you say now? Like two and a half years, something like that. But um, it, one that comes to mind, we just actually finished our student, a brand new animated student testimonial video, which has the voices of many, many students and their stories. Um, I think one, what really comes out and we hear time and time again from our students um, and from uh, our partnering schools, our educators and parents is our students feel prepared to transition to the next um, higher education experience, wherever that you know may be, your students transfer, as you can hear from Will, to Landmark. 
um, they enjoy it very much and find benefit and want to extend their time with us, um, or they transfer really all over the United States to different institutions. Um, we see a higher level of self-advocacy and self-awareness, um, self-esteem increases over time um, and an increased level of academic stamina. Um, and again, I, I really go back to the importance of you know, being able to explore. We hear time and time again that from students that it's, um, dual enrollment has just been such a wonderful opportunity for them to be able to explore what their interests are before making costly educational commitments. And I just tag on to that, that um, it, once they're through the door, I mean, I, I would actually say we have a wonderful tradition at Landmark College when it comes to our commencement ceremonies. We don't ever really invite any guest speakers to talk to the students. We have the students talk to them and they each give their testimonial at each one. They're all out there. Go on out to Landmark College website and, and find our, our past talks because each student comes up with a story. And generally the story is, you know, the student will start off um, almost with their heads down, you know, the parents doing all the talking. They're not really sure why they're in college. They haven't set a direction for college yet because they don't really believe that they can be successful in college. And by the time they get across that stage for commencement, or if they transfer out to the college that they want to go, with, whatever it is that's right for them, their head is up, they're in control, they have a direction, and they're saying, I did it. And that is, there is never a dry eye in the, in the, in the auditorium uh, because you just see that what we've given to the world and what they've given to us uh, is, the, is unlocking the potential of all of these amazing people who have so much to contribute to our society. And now they actually can because education is believed in them. And, and now they're unlocked and, and there, there'll be no stopping them because they've overcome so much just to get that far. The, the sky's the limit. And it's, it's the most rewarding job in the world to just hear those stories and watch that, that evolving um, sense of self come from all of these amazing students. Mm, that is incredible. And I have, I, have, I have goosebumps listening to you. And I did put uh, the Landmark uh, website in the chat for everyone. And it will, I will be also, I'm gonna share it again right now. It will be also coming into an email to you today. Amory, did you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, my favorite story, of course, is, is Will's because I've seen it firsthand. But I'd also like to share that um, I know a, a, a family here in San Francisco. Their son just graduated from high school with an IEP. Nobody in the family has gone to college. You know, a tremendously um, amazing family, but that hasn't been an opportunity for them. And this young man was probably going to just start his career. And uh, so he signed up. We were able to get him into uh, a dual online class, and it was an intro to business class. He loved it. All of a sudden, his father sees him talking about the business world and all this and it 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 it's it has set a different path for him just because of having that online opportunity that was designed very well he was successful and now he's like okay how do i keep going that's incredible thank you for sharing that specifically really powerful so thank you all. I, I want to get, we have lots of questions. So I would like to spend some time jumping over to these questions, if that would be okay with all of you. Um, Claudia has a question. How is online learning would benefit a boy that has poor social skills and how to substitute that emotional and physical need? That's probably a very big a common question about, you know, how, how do you bridge that social gap online? I would, um, I would say that um, there are many opportunities to um, communicate online um, in, in many different ways. So it's one piece of something that's larger, right? It's not gonna be everything. Um, so it is one piece. So learning how to um, structure an email appropriately, how to address um, your colleagues appropriately, um, how to attend office hours and navigate in that space. Um, how to post on discussion boards and have collegial um, discourse amongst peers, those kinds of things. So there's many, many different opportunities online. Um, you know, 
whether at Landmark or um, elsewhere. Love for people to, to take our courses, but 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 just looking through that lens, right? That online does offer those offer those opportunities um, for social growth. Right. I think, um, one specific example, Will, you could you shared this with me about how it was the interaction was scaffold. So there was going to be a discussion and the professor had said, you have, you know, you, everybody has to contribute and then you need to respond to two people. Um, and so I think that was very, that was part of creating that interaction because it was very specific at what needed to be done and chunked. Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, I think you probably got this got this from from and I even like looked back at it. Um, you know, the first course I took was perspectives in learning. And, you know, I think an example of kind of interactive learning that I think could help, um, at least in an online setting a little bit, um, uh, at least with your classmates is interacting on the material with your classmates and replying and saying, oh, hey, that's a good point. Oh, you know, asking questions, those types of things uh, is really important. Can I yeah. add just sure. a sure. personal, personal uh, observation, and this applies to anybody over the age of 25 years old. This is a, uh, this is a news here. Um, this generation of students um, has a tremendous amount of modalities of communication at their disposal. Right for all of us 25 and older, it was usually in person, either to respond through conversation and lecture style in the academic environment or socially uh, face to face or remember those things called telephones that used to hang off the walls right that was our only two mediums of, of communication. So for somebody who's got let's say budding social skills, who is maybe struggling with some of those traditional modalities, you know the the the, the chat windows the uh, the the the. Um, you know the the voice recorded messages to peers these are all different modalities for the current student to be able to choose from and as they choose the modality that fits them best they start to experience that growing confidence as they are able to articulate themselves in a way that feels right terrific that, that's a really great point about there are so many other ways to communicate and that's a blessing too so it's wonderful to be able to learn that and become confident with that um, we have a we have a question here from Jack. Um, could the panelists address issues for students with profiles consisting of NVLD and slow processing? They also Jack wanted to know if this would be recorded. Yes, this is recorded. You will have access to it, so you can watch it again and you can share it with your community. We'd love for you to do so. Um, but can anyone address that question for Jack in regard to NVLD? I think. Um, when in the very beginning of um, of this this conversation was you know what has been beneficial for students you know in online learning and I think just that is the the time to process information to slow down the information that's coming in um, in the way that a student needs it um, and just the tremendous flexibility, having um, the technology tools that are out there that continue to, to, to emerge. Um, I think it's a, it is a, a perfect LD <laughs> for, for online. <laughs> you can just Agreed, slow Tabitha. everything down. <laughs> right, right. Agreed, Tabitha. I, I think that the pedagogical practices that Landmark has really honed um, in a face-to-face -face, um, environment was then translated and, and used as the design team worked on what these how these courses would be delivered. So the use of, of advanced organizers to, to shape what's to come, to predict where you're going, and to be able to chunk the content in such a way that makes it more accessible, the intentional time management that's built into the course to help keep a person on track and also be able to go back to where they were, and the embedded and academic support um, that goes with the course allows for that 
um, just th that discussion, that dialogue, that isn't, you know, it's uh, unlike some other online courses, an online course is just the tool that facilitates the discussion and the communication between the team uh, and the student. And so all of that goes to helping the student um, track their goals for themselves within the course, have the faculty member um, align where they are, take them where they are and, and get them to where they need to go to, to achieve those outcomes and really make use of universal design, not only in the way that, that a curriculum is presented, but also in the way it's assessed, um, which can make a huge difference for students uh, who learn differently. Thank you. I'll, I'll just add to that also, Gail, is the executive function um, aspect of it is something that we, we are um, pay particular attention to because we know that, you know, most of our students do struggle with executive function uh, skills. And so we're very intentional in scaffolding um, executive function skill building. So that's through course design and then also the way that it's delivered and also in our pedagogy. Um, so it's really kind of a um, constellation of, of, of aspects and things that goes into the course that, that do scaffold and approach executive function. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, you know, um, we, we have an attendee here who's asking a question that I think a lot of parents want to know is, you know, what is the best approach for parents to support their students at Landmark online or in person without becoming a helicopter parent? <laughs> I think we can all relate. <laughs> I really appreciate that question and the conversation we have with families. We talk a lot about scaffolding at Landmark and about where the student starts and where the student's going. I feel the same way about the relationships with families. Um, they are very much a part of the team. We start together, we learn from each other, and then we try to pull apart so the student has more autonomy. The idea I think we all have is that the student in the end is going to be you know, at the front of that bike leading the, the direction for their own path. And we do have to start stripping it away. I think that the transition from high school to college can be really challenging because among other things, when a student comes to college uh, at the college age, they are an adult um, and it is up to them. They, they have control over their own uh, destiny, um, but yet we still want to be able to create good communication tools with families. And we really encourage families to think more about how they're talking to their student and getting the feedback from their student and encouraging their student to, uh, to, to self-advocate and ask those questions. If, you know, these are, these are college age students, whether you've got an LD or not, your student may not want to talk to you. <laughs> I've got one myself. He doesn't always want to talk to me. Um, but there, the importance is to have confidence in the student, have faith in the, in the instructional system, and be sure that you can continue to ask your questions and, and make sure that these, these, um, the concerns that you have are are, are addressed uh, no matter where you, no matter what the situation is at landmark we actually don't use the word helicopter parent we know what families have gone through to to navigate the educational system and we don't expect them to just you know jump out of the helicopter um, we uh, we really want to encourage them to to slowly you know let go and 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 build on the successes and strip away that scaffolding um, with all of us having the eye on in the end it's going to be the student who's in charge Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a question here about cameras. Let me just get to it. Um, Maureen wanted to know about the anxiety around video cameras for many students. And, you know, they want to know how hard should a school push for all students to be on camera, for example? And how do you handle that? So I think it depends on um, what is, um, well, some schools are, you know, completely synchronous, so they're live, um, and so that presents a different set of challenges for students, especially students um, who struggle with attention. Um, so I think it, it depends um, on what the purpose, the, the learning outcome is, and what the intent is. That will really help to guide the educator and also um, the student, their own self, you know, expectation, setting that expectation, appropriate expectation of what should be live and what should not and help to navigate. Um, one of the things we do actually have a good story is um, one of, uh, we have a student just recently who really struggled with being on camera. And so 
it was the goal of um, between the student and also their course advisor, because in online dual enrollment, each student does have a course advisor, and that person works um, individually every week with a student. And so one of the goals that they set was to do little micro goals of just a few minutes online on the camera, talk about, you know, unpack that and process how that was for them, and then really build up. And the student then was able to have, um, you know, prolonged um, FaceTime like this in, in their in their meetings and also attend um, office hours. I think one thing that you brought up that's so important is intention. You know, very often these rules are made and there's no intention behind it. And I think right. that right there is, is a huge aha moment for the difference between Landmark and other schools, whether there is actually an intention behind it as opposed to, you know, I see some teachers just say, well, you have to have your video camera on because because right. I said so. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. It doesn't work as a parent and it doesn't work no. as a teacher. For no. sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, I mean, I, we could sit here all day and talk with you all. You're so generous with your time and your information. I mean, I have here so many things here. You know, thank you. I'm so happy to learn about Landmark. There's hope for my godson who said challenges all his life because of his differences. Thank you for sharing this information. Thank you for your valuable insights throughout this presentation. Thank you so much. It's so informative. I mean, this really has been a very special um, conversation and I really appreciate all of you, our panelists being here with us um, from, from Will as a student, um, you know, Amory, Tabitha, Gail, Dean, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. We will, as I wanna mention again, we have um, recorded this. We will provide the recording to you so that you can watch it again. You can also share it with your uh, family, friends, community, please do. We want the word to get out and people for un understanding um, that there are for learning differences, spectacular options, um, both online and in person. Um, also, you'll be getting an email tomorrow with um, contact information, so you'll have that. Dean, did you want to say something quickly? So you yeah, <clears throat> just quick closing thought. Will, sure. Will, make no mistake, everybody on this call wants to retire someday. You, my friend, are the future of this movement. So don't ever underestimate how valuable you are. Amen. Amen Thank to you. that. And, and with that, I'm going to thank all of our attendees for being here. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on a future Schnepps Media webinar. I wish you all a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, keep on. Thank you, Will. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you.